Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us Yani Balmas, VP of Research at Sol Security. And today we are going to discuss the newly released API vulnerability research from Sol Labs that kind of details a server-side request forgery or SSRF flaw, which was discovered on a US-based fintech company's digital platform. Before we talk about that, first of all, Yanev, welcome to the show. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, let's get into the weeds of it. First of all, tell us, you know, what is server-side request forgery and what kind of threat it is? So server-side request forgery, as you said, also known as SSRF, uh, it's basically an age-old vulnerability, nothing new. Uh, and, and it was there even before we even heard the terms API. It's been in the web for forever. Uh, but basically what it does is when a user uh, inputs, somehow inputs a URL, some kind of URL into the system, then the backend uh, blindly trusts this URL and it will go and you know try to browse to it or do something else with it. That creates an SSRF condition and that could lead to very dangerous uh, situations, uh, which is basically what we found. And obviously, uh, as I said, it's not a new vulnerability, but it still exists and it's very much here and alive and even on API uh, layers, um, it's all over the place. So what happens with most of these flaws and vulnerability is that in most cases, companies don't even get to know whether they were exposed to them or not. So uh, can you give some advice what organizations can do to identify if they are exposed? That's a pretty good question. I guess that's usually the problem with vulnerabilities. If you knew it were there, it was there, you'll probably do something about it. And the problem is that most organizations don't know it's there. Uh, and, and recommendations here could be, uh, there could be a lot of recommendations, but let me just point out maybe two of the major ones. One is have a consistent code review and make sure that you, um, you know, look through your code. Uh, if you're looking for SSRF, then always look for places where you get user-controlled input that's being transferred into some kind of outgoing request or even internal request. Uh, that's internally what you can do, uh, but I think that's not the only solution. I think there should be always another solution as a backup plan or you know two two protections uh, working in parallel and that usually would be something like okay don't trust anything internally just go to a third party that will know to look at your traffic um, you know see what's going on understand when there is a this kind of behavioral anomaly because that's at the end of the day that's what it is it's a behavioral anomaly and then know how to detect it or to block it regardless of whether you manage to fix it in your code or not, I think the mixture of both of these protections uh, would help mitigate a very large portion of SSRF, SSRF attacks and, and, and more. Now, knowing that you are exposed is, is good, but um, once again, <laughs> I want to know from you uh, what advice you have for them so that they can also at least try to protect themselves against such flaws? Well, basically, it's it's exactly what I said. I don't think there's anything um, more than that. Uh, for, I think maybe, you know, maybe an additional thing would be to, uh, because, okay, look, at, at the end of the day, this bug, SSRF, as well as any other bug, it always starts with a human error. So there is so the, someone who is coding your software and he made an error somewhere, and, and quite usually he's not aware that he made that error because it's a very slight error, but in the wrong hands, it could become very dangerous and critical. So I would say that the, you know, the third uh, leg here, the third uh, thing that could be done is education. Uh, your software engineers, whoever is writing your software, with, whoever is designing your software, should be aware of the common vulnerability types, to say the least, uh, and know that you know how to identify them and know how to prevent them before they even present themselves at the code. So just be aware, just educate your uh, your software developers. That's that that would be my ultimate uh, my ultimate suggestion here. Of course, uh, once you know that you are exposed to the flaw, you have also done things uh, that 
are there to protect yourself from such flaw there might still be some gaps that are there so can you also once again share uh, what are the steps that can be taken to remediate any gaps that might be there well yeah, i think the best approach that i know of uh would be to uh not try and understand everything and try to you know, see that I can find anything by defining, okay, I'm looking for an SSRF, I'm looking for this thing, I'm looking for that thing, because usually this that kind of method, method is incomplete. It will never be complete. And I think uh, the most effective manner would be uh, behavioral based. So, you know, a website such as anything or a web service or anything else should behave in a certain way. And if you look at, you know, the last million requests that came to your web service or website, the million and one request should practically look the same. It shouldn't differ a lot from that. And if it does differ a lot from that, there is a very high chance that something weird is going on. It might be an attack, it might be something else, but that would be a great and very effective way to try and spot the things that you might have missed in your internal code review or uh, in any other uh, methods. Now, this is going to be a kind of a higher level uh, discussion in general about uh, the security. I mean, we live in more or less like a cloud-centric, cloud-native world. Uh, we still have those traditional IT shops. We still do a lot of things on-prem, but cloud native is more or less like not a thing, but way of doing things. So can you talk about uh, because of this changing landscape where folks are, you know, of a digital transformation is happening, folks are moving to a cloud native kind of processes. With this changing landscape, uh, how it's also changing for financial institutions uh, where security is a different kind of, you know, a challenge for them. And also, of course, once again, we also live in an API-driven world. How does API kind of fit into this new reality where, of course, the challenge, the risk, the vulnerability, they're also changing? So that's a great question. First of all, I think that the, the problem here is not specifically with FinTech. Of course, it's with, I think, with everything. But I think FinTech is a very good example of a business sector that's moving really, really, really quickly towards whatever you said. So first of all, it's moving towards being cloud-based uh, and it's moving towards APIs. The motivation for that is that, you know, today, if you are a financial institution, a bank or any other financial institution, if you're not providing your services online, uh, then, you know, maybe today it could still work, but looking ahead, you know, a few years, I don't think there will be a lot of businesses, you know, doing doing this, this the same traditional uh, financial uh, approach uh, that we had uh, five, 10, 15 years ago. And I think that that shift comes with two very major flavors. One is the shift to the cloud. So uh, nobody is using on-prem anymore. They are all moving everything to the cloud. While it might seem to be the same thing, what's the, what's the difference? I mean, if I have the server here, right next to me in my server room, or if I have it in the cloud, it's basically the same thing. Generally speaking, yes, it is the same thing, but the devil is always in the details and the nuances count. And you can make sure, you, you can be sure that attackers will know to identify those you know, small places where there is a difference between cloud and on-prem and will know how to abuse that to their advantage. Same thing goes for APIs. APIs today are everything, they are everywhere. Uh, roughly 80% of all your internet traffic today passes through an API in one way or another. And that's even you know, bigger in FinTech because you have the same traditional API transition as with everything else, but then within FinTech, there are very large trends like uh, open banking and and, and, and stuff like that, which, you know, define the new way of financial institutions talking to each other, talking to the customers. Everything there is based on APIs. And again, it's the same thing as in the cloud, while you might think, okay, so what changed? Nothing really changed. I'm just using a, a different method, an API there. But again, the devil is in the details. And APIs might be a wonderful thing, but if you don't pay close attention to these nuances, 
uh, you might find yourself in a very, very sticky situation, uh, exactly like the case that we are just uh, talking about uh, right now. It's a very good use case showing exactly uh, this phenomenon, this thing happening in the real world. Can you also talk about what is SALT security doing? What kind of you know solutions you have uh, to help folks? Because once again, as you touched upon earlier, and we know that things are very, very complicated in this cloud native API driven work and security becomes one more big challenge that you can really, uh, I mean, you can lose your whole branding, you know, forget about, you know, a dollar amount. So talk about uh, how you help, uh, you know, users and customers. Right, so Salt Security does exactly what I, what I said when I talked about behavioral security. We were very smart to identify that several years ago. Actually, we were the first to identify that and, and to go into this market uh, and try to create a solution uh, that knows, first of all, it's a SaaS solution, so it's cloud-based. You don't, it's very easy integration and uh, you, should, you, you should be able to integrate that into any environment into any service that's out there that's very important and once you've done that what our solution does basically it knows in a, how to study your api traffic in a very smart way that, that could be very challenging if you think about the implementation details of it and the amounts of traffic that we need to deal with but we figured out how to do that and we do that quite good today uh, basically we can you know you, you just place us at some network uh, protecting uh, some web service or some web services, and we will know how to do exactly that. We will look at the million requests that just came into your service, and then we'll build some kind of pattern saying, okay, that's how your web service should behave because most users are legit, they are doing good things. And then once we see any deviation from this baseline that we just built, then that means that something bad is going on. If you be smart about it and know how to add a few of these parameters together, you can get to a very fine-grained level of alerting uh, of, of things that are very, very dangerous to you while not alerting on things that might not interest you because that's another very important thing. You must keep focused. You can't just throw a million alerts out there and expect someone to be able to cope with them. You need to provide the smallest amount of alerts that are real ones. Uh, and that's a very big challenge that we're dealing with. And I think we're, de we're dealing with, with it very well. Yanif, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk about this SSRF flaw. But in general, uh, what really uh, was incredible was the sh insights that you shared or you know how organizations can protect themselves and how SALT security is helping them. So thanks for sharing all those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much.